Welcome to new SafeJS podcast and this time around it's about flat packs. Flat packs is a kind of container format to package apps that contain all the libraries and all the necessities to run this app in a specific version. So that means that uh, SafeJS, which still has Qt 5.6 as down layer framework where all native applications sit on top, can now distribute flat packs that ship their own version of Qt 5, which might be a newer version like Qt 5.12 or 5.9, that has different abilities. You can also have GTK if you want to have that as a graphical framework. It can, has, can have various different libraries that SafeJS usually doesn't ship down here in the layer. But up here in the flatback you can have this. This usually means that usually if you have native applications on SafeJS, oh, well, very very little when it comes to the file size itself like a few kilobytes or megabytes because they are using the native SafeJS libraries that are provided by the operating system. Flatpaks, on the contrast, have their own little library pack basically that's usually part of the operating system and it's several hundreds of megabytes big. So flatpaks have to include this and the application. So to make it not as big on an application update as possible, what they do is simply say all the libraries, we pack them together in a runtime, which is basically another flat pack that the application itself is based upon. And yeah, this is basically how package management works, but it is done in a way that is system agnostic, that it's not depending on a specific system. So. It is basically like this that for a flatpak app on the first try you have to download lots and lots and lots and lots of gigabytes or megabytes of the base system first on which this flatpak is based upon. But as mostly all the other flatpak apps are also based on this base system you only have to download it once. And then you have the option to just simply install this one app which is a bit bigger than maybe the native SafeJS app, but it is still smaller than the app plus the big runtime. And in this video I want to show you how you can install this flatpak support after you, I think, now guessed what benefits it might bring to SafeJS users with new application versions and the variety of different frame th frameworks that you can then use without them having to be in the base core of SafeJS itself. I want to go through the steps that you need to take to download and install your first Flatpak application under SafeJS. What you need to have is SafeJS 3.3 and at least I think kernel 3.5. So. I'm not sure, but I think that it's not working on the first YOLA phone, if I'm correct. But you can miss, if I did a mistake, you can correct me in my comments. And otherwise, let's get started and take a look at the um, website. It's done by um, many different people, but there's one major developer, open source developer, um, who we have to thank for Flatpak support in SafeJS. And I want to do this here right now by just going through the steps that he lists on his github page uh, that tell you how to install flatback under SafeJS. So let's get going. Here we are on the documentation page for flatback support for SafeJS done by Rinigus and it goes through the steps that you have to take and let me take you through the steps. First of all check your supported devices usually the Xperia 10, the Xperia XA line, XA2 line and the Xperia X line are supported when they are running version 3.3 of SafeJS. Otherwise, take a look at Lab Hybris version needs to be this version, and of course the kernel version needs to be higher or equals to 3.5. And uh, yeah, possibly there's a backport eventually for older devices. But if you are using a ported device, contact your porter to tell you if this is possible. 
So installation and usage. So the only thing that you have to do is connect to your device via SSH and then enter or just go to your device and enter those commands by yourself adding the repository Rinegus uh, Flatpak repository. I did this already and run the package con refresh, refresh to refresh the package list and uh, this has done by me as well as you can see here and the only thing that we have to do is then uh, devil is zoo package con install flat pack oh if i type it correctly then it will work and then you hit enter and it will start downloading all the necessary uh, packages that you need as you can see here if you see something like this it will ask proceed with the changes and in this case I will say yes I want this and it will start downloading the necessary files that you need to have to run Flatpak. This is not everything as of course Flatpak is kind of a package manager of its own I told you with its runtimes you have to also take a look at how you can use Flatpak and this is here the a reboot to finish installation of course and then the section uh, here which allows you to add something like flat hub which is a repository for flat packs and let me go through this after I rebooted my device So here we have my Xperia 10 Plus running Selfish OS and you will see that after installing Flatpak Runner and rebooting you get a Flatpak icon here that you can click on and it will basically list all your installed Flatpaks and have a default settings category as well where you can set up different settings as well as the option to have some extensions here. As you can see here you can update the extension or remove the extension which is necessary uh, for graphics on devices that are not supported by Flatpak to run, for example, libhybris based devices like this one. So this one is necessary for running Flatpaks on Safish OS itself. So let's take a look at how to add Flatpak repositories and install our first application. So what we want to do now is add the biggest repository that is available for Flatpaks, which is called FlatHub. You can find it on the website in this guide. I marked it already and everything that ha we have to do is simply copy this line and then we go to our terminal and we of course have to re-log in to our device but then we can just simply add this and it will take a bit uh, of it's complaining about GPG connect agent ignore this it will add the flat hub uh, package repository anyway and uh, then we can also take a look for KDE apps because you know KDE Plasma has its own um, mobile set of apps. We can copy this the line of KDE apps as well and insert it as well to add some other applications just like for example a web browser which is a bit newer than what we usually have. Then one very important thing is after installing this we can of course also install applications by just putting flatback install and then user and app name. User is very important because we want to install this as user and one very important step as well for having keyboard input support is also written here for safe as keyboard support you have to install this line here and uh, you can change the version 514 is uh, the one that they use here but you can also change to 512 if you want to use Qt 512 base instead of 514 base but we will go with the 514 base because we want to have the newest Qt version for the web browser which uses also a newer web engine but um, make sure to execute this as user and it will install it will ask if you really want to install this from this location FlatHub in this case and we will say yes we want to install this from FlatHub hit enter and then it will ask this is what you want to install it's from FlatHub it's under 3.4 megabytes in size as you can see here and we will say yes okay we want to enter this as well 
and it's now installing this as you can see uh, for some reason it pops up some error message and I think the font is wrong but in general it is installing what we want to install here and just ignore my font rendering issues the next thing that we want to do is install our first Flatpak application we go back here because there's one nice little web browser called angelfish we copy the angelfish uh, name because it's a longer string as you can see here and we yeah want to install this we copy this and say flatback install and then the uh, RKD mobile angelfish and it will ask yeah what do we want to install yes we want to install from this remote yes we want to install the runtime that it needs to run so a dependency and then it will list everything here again as you can see here it is installing the uh, org free desktop platform gl default a runtime which is about 53 megabytes in size it will install the org kde platform locale which holds all the localizations it's the biggest file with uh, 337 megabytes and then the org kde platform repository or runtime which is uh, 283 megabytes in size and which is in version 5 14 here which is probably also based on Qt 514 this is how they uh, named this and the application itself under 50 megabytes here we say yes we want to install this and it will then start downloading and installing all the uh, runtimes and of course then also the application and I'll be back in a few seconds after installation finished and I'll show you how to run the first installed flat pack so as you can see here in my launcher i have already the image for angelfish but before we click on it we have to change some settings we go to our flat pack runner and see the angelfish entry here and uh, what is recommended is over scaling overriding the scaling factor and overriding the dpi and set it to uh, three times scaling and 120 dpi at least here on the Xperia 10 plus device it looks then okay to me you can experiment with those settings if you want to don't forget to apply this setting and then to start the application just go to your launcher and click on the angelfish launcher in this case and then it will take a while a few seconds for it to launch the application don't be scared about this just wait until the got apply it and then you can see it is loading and it's uh, yeah opening the doctor go page and i can start surfing and this i can do basically with every application that is installable via a flat pack you can search applications pretty easily with the flat pack search term and you can find some application that you want to install here and just to try it out not all applications are meant for running on Selfish OS, but most of them, interestingly enough, do run pretty well. So this is everything for this little demonstration. I hope you enjoyed this and you know how to install flat packs on Selfish OS now. And one of the next videos, I will show you the web browser that I just installed, Angelfish, and I'll show you how it performs in terms of performance and what kind of tips and tricks I might found out after using it for a while. I hope you enjoyed this video. You can ask questions in the comment section. You can like and subscribe. And it's, that's everything for this little video. Until the next time, bye.